not like it used to be, folks, where this time of year we were talking about bowl games. Now it seems like that's last on the list. It's comings and goings all over the place. We're talking Clemson football. We got Jason Priester here from allclemsontigers.com. Jason, I guess you've been a busy guy. Yeah, a little bit busy this past week. Absolutely, man. Coaching changes, portal moves, or, or got so far as guys exiting for the portal, a couple of NFL announcements. So, yeah, it, it's it's been a few busy few days with a bowl announcement on top of that. This is December 3rd, so let's go to the news that's hot off the presses, which is interior offensive lineman Watson Young has uh, committed for the 24 class. Yeah, he, he's been committed to App State for a while. Uh, three-star guy. He is the son of Kyle Young, former Clemson offensive lineman. He, he he's he's on the um he's a golly I forget his title a, a associate AD or something at Clemson now. Um, so he's employed by the school. From my, I don't know a lot about him to be honest. I haven't watched much of his film, and I'm not a, an offensive line expert, anyways. But I've been told that if he was a couple inches taller, an inch or maybe two inches taller, there would have been way more schools on him, man. That that is measurables is what hurt him. And Clemson's had a little bit of success with, with taking guys like that and turning them into good interior guys. I, I think they got eyes on him playing center, and the Tigers have struggled struggled mightily with offensive linemen in this recruiting class. I think that plays a part in this one. Um, you know, just it, it, I, I get it. People are going to say this is Dabo being Dabo, the friends and family thing, but he's not a five-star guy. He's not a high four-star guy. He's a developmental guy, make no mistake. But I think he's a developmental guy that gives you something to work with. Watson Young out of Central South Carolina. Now, yeah, right. two guys that aren't aren't developmental guys shouldn't I was, be. I was going to say he's right there from Daniel, man. And, and Clemson fans hate that Clemson to Daniel connection, you know, because Dabo takes a lot of those kids from Daniel because they're so familiar with them, man. But a lot of fans don't like that. So now we turn our attention toward 2025 and a couple of guys that shouldn't be developmental guys. You wouldn't think at this point. We shall see. Uh, wide receiver and a defensive end. Yeah, the big one's the defensive end. Amari Adams from right here in Florence, where I'm at, goes to South Florence, um, played for a state title Saturday, came up on the bad end of a heartbreaking 34-32 loss Saturday. But um, this is one that that we were actually talking about this last time, me and you talked about recruiting, how, how – if a guy grows up a Clemson fan in this state, he usually tends to go with Clemson if it's a head-to-head -head battle. And if it's a South Carolina fan, he'll go with South Carolina. Well, here's the except one of those exceptions, because this is a guy who grew up a South Carolina fan. And it was assumed by many forever that he was going to end up at Clemson. Um, he visited back in the summer during Dabo Sweeney's high school camp. Didn't work out, but visited, was back for the Clemson's Overtime loss to Florida State. He took multiple visits to South Carolina. From my understanding, it came down to Clemson, South Carolina, and Georgia. And I'm not exactly sure how hard Georgia was pursuing here lately, but I was told it came down to those three. And I don't know exactly when, but at some point, man, this thing started to turn in Clemson's favor. I think Nick Easton, Nick Easton played a big part in this defensive tackles coach. I, I think Clemson's track, or I know Clemson's track record, of developing defensive linemen played a huge role. His last visit to Columbia was for Clemson's win over the Gamecocks, you know, last weekend. Uh, and he saw that defensive front, how dominant it was. And on Monday, that is the day he told Dabo Sweeney, the Monday after that game, that he was coming. So um, you'll hear a lot of message board talk about his daddy not being on board. And I've told that's just 100% not true. His daddy's all about him going where he can be developed and they have a uh, he's got full confidence that, that that'll happen at Clemson. Still a long ways to go to sign a day. You know, South Carolina's not going to let up. But this is a big recruiting win. Clemson went 0 for 3 on the in-state offensive lineman in the 2024 cycle. And now you're starting out, or not really starting out, but early in the 2025 cycle, you have taken the top player in the state who everybody had pegged to South Carolina, and you've kind of plucked him out of their grasp. Is there going to be any more drama in the next couple of weeks 
before we get to Wednesday the 20th. Clips is still waiting on a commit or a decision from offensive lineman, four-star kid out of Alabama, um, Elijah Thurman. Um, excuse me. Uh, maybe uh, he's out of Georgia. Um, Bradwell Institute, Hinesville, Georgia. Yeah. You can. Um, out of Georgia. He visited Clipson a couple of times this season, an unofficial visit, an official visit. He's going to South Carolina this weekend. Um, not sure where Clipson stands in this one. He, he's a guy that I've never really talked to before outside of exchanging a couple of texts about visits. Um, and not sure how much the coaching change at Clemson impacts this. Clemson has just brought on a new offensive line coach. Thomas Austin's out. Um, maybe get some more clarity after he takes his visit to South Carolina. I do think he's going to sign during the early signing period. So, so that's one they're waiting on, and they're waiting on four-star linebacker Bradley Shaw, who is from Alabama, um, a guy that does no interviews. I've never spoken with him. Uh, they just don't say much to the public. Don't think he took any game day visits to anywhere but Clemson. Um, this, I'm pretty sure he's going to sign during the early signing period based on what I've heard. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be Clemson. But again, this is one of those deals where he, he just, you just you don't know for sure until you know for sure. And he just doesn't say anything public. He keeps very, things very close to the vest. So th those are the two right now. That, that I'm keeping an eye on for the early signing period.